So it's a little bit of a two part of this. So the plenary is gonna be kind of introducing you to what Toyota do, what we're about, what TLMC do. Um, and the second part of it is gonna be the, the learning session, but the two of them will combine how we develop a Kaizen spirit or develop the Kaizen culture within uh, our environment. So who are we? I'll introduce you to me, first of all, Mark Siddall. Uh, I started with Toyota back in 1998. So those of you who are really good at maths, it's my 25th year this year coming up. Uh, I started on the assembly process, first experience of, of that type of environment, uh, and I was, wasn't there for very long. Uh, and the assembly line I started on runs a lot faster now than it did when I was on there, but I'm pretty sure that's got nothing to do with, with me. It's just the way that we've improved things. Uh, and then I got chosen to be in the casting project. Uh, I was very fortunate uh, in that I got to visit Japan. Uh, and in 20 years in the casting plant, I got to visit lots of Toyota facilities in various locations around the world, uh, using, sharing the same tools and systems. And in my mind, I always believed that what we were doing, everybody was doing, because it's very simple to apply. And that's what you'll get when we go through the, through the uh, presentations today. It was only when I joined this group, uh, TLMC, four years ago, that I got to go to companies that weren't Toyota, so outside organizations, understanding what they were about and how they want to apply improvements. And it was only then I realized if you don't share that knowledge, those simple, simple uh, approaches to things, you will not get those light bulb moments. Uh, so that was the real eye opener for me. Uh, the other gentleman that's gonna be supporting me today is, is Kenny Barlow who sat at the back. So Kenny will introduce himself to you when we get into the, uh, into the learning session later on. So what do we do at Toyota, the role of TLMC uh, within the group that I work? Uh, it's twofold, it's about the culture and it's about the tools. Lots of what you've spoken about already uh, yesterday uh, resonates and myself and Kenny were almost playing Toyota bingo with the different phrases and um, examples that you were giving as we went through the day. Uh, they're all things that we would talk about. It's about developing the people fundamentally. Develop the people and they will develop the organization for you. Uh, what does TLMC do? So we will work with any non-competitive organization. So if you don't make engines or you don't make cars, uh, we will come and we will work with you and we will share what we do to try and apply that to your business. And that doesn't mean that you have to manufacture goods. It could be uh, in, in lots of different sectors, uh, in lots of different environments. So. In terms of some of the organizations that we've worked with, uh, I said there's, there's many sectors you can apply lean to. Uh, I think myself and Kenny, as we were traveling over in the, in the car yesterday, we were having a discussion about religion. Uh, we were talking about religion and how important a uh, role religion plays. Uh, and if I'm honest, I didn't realize when I came here that the religion we were gonna be talking about was lean and that actually we were all at the altar of Toyota because in terms of pressure and applying pressure, it's been bigged up uh, hugely for us. Um, but yeah, so we work with lots of different organizations and examples of them are there in lots of different sectors. Uh, we've worked across 26 countries, 432 companies, and almost 7,500 individuals have been trained in the time that TL TLMC has been in operation. In terms of Toyota in the UK, uh, we are based in the, the North Wales plant, the engine facility that you'll visit tomorrow. Uh, that started up here in 1992, so we just celebrated our 30 year anniversary last year of Toyota in the UK. The car assembly plant started a little bit later, so we stake the claim in North Wales that we're the most experienced plant because we opened first, but they still opened a little bit later than us. The message I always try to get across with this one, and it was touched on yesterday, is how many employees there are in the organizations when they started. So I think we started with 550, uh, and there's around about 650 there now, so it hasn't changed that much in all that time. Uh, and very similar in terms of numbers at the Derbyshire plant. It's not so much about how much money's been invested, the statement about being the most experienced plant in Europe, there are a number of plants in, in other locations around Europe now, when they do things, they look to us to support them. Uh, and those of you who are visiting site tomorrow, we can share a little bit more about that uh, when you're there. So, Kai and Zen. Uh, I was conscious yesterday as people were delivering their, their different uh, sessions that maybe this would come up. I did see some um, Japanese kanji. 
Uh, but the, the two words that make up Kaizen, change and good, and change is good, right? Everyone recognises that change is good? Yeah, everyone says that they recognise change is good. We're from a change environment. Change is occurring all the time. Really, how many people like change? How many people embrace change? Not very many. Yeah, so we all programmed routinely to do things routinely. And as much as we recognise that improvement is a betterment, it's very difficult to get people to change. And we're all up here at a level saying, how do we get people to do things different? But actually, when we're asked to do something different, we don't like doing something different. So how do you do that? How do you, uh, how do you develop that? I'm gonna go into a, a little bit of a, a history touch on now. Uh, and I'm conscious because so many of you in the room have got a lot of lean experience, you, you might be aware of this, but anyway, I'll persist. Uh, so where did Kaizen begin for Toyota? So Sakichi Toyoda, uh, the founder of the organization, was a self-taught engineer. Uh, his father was a carpenter. His mother worked uh, making material, loom, and she used to work extremely long hours making material. And if the material would fail on the rudimentary looms that she used then, people wouldn't recognize that. And so they would continue making defect material uh, and having to work lots of hours and doing it again, reworks and the like. Uh, and Sakichi invented uh, Pokioki system, the automatic loom, uh, that, was, that was created and developed that and then actually went on and sold the patent for that, the automatic loom, to the, the Platt brothers in Manchester who became uh, world textile uh, manufacturers, the, the biggest textile manufacturers in the world at the time. So that's where, that's where that thinking way began uh, in him uh, back when the, the company was founded. We spoke uh, just, just a second ago about the, the tools and about the culture. Uh, and the culture for us is, we touched on the Toyota way yesterday. I think John Shuck was, was talking about that yesterday, uh, yesterday. Whether we were talking about the 2001 culture or the one that's, uh, that's gone on in, into 2020, we always use the 2001 because it was the first one that came and it's very simple to explain. So it's two spheres, continuous improvement and respect for people. Three key areas of continuous improvement are challenge. Yeah, so we challenge, um, in our environment, challenge is you should be comfortable challenging someone that comes into your area that isn't wearing the correct PPE, can be a form of challenge. We challenge ourselves to be better this afternoon than we were this morning, of course we do. Kaizen, we challenge our members, every member, uh, Toyota, everyone that works at the organization is called a team member. We challenge our members to identify two Kaizens on their process every month. Do we get two Kaizens from every member every month? Probably not. We probably get more than two from some members. Some members are really good at Kaizen, really focused, but the challenge is there, that it, it, it's set down. And then Genchi Genbutsu. So I know that we had the Someone mentioned Genshi Genbutsu yesterday. It's the actual place, the actual thing. And to my mind, this is the most important part of the Toyota Way. And it's something that I've heard everybody talking about, the importance of going to the process and speaking to the people. And that's what Genshi Genbutsu should deliver. So if you're the kind of organization that has problems, and we know that Kaizen is, is born of identifying problems and identifying wastes. If you're the kind of organization where the management turn up when there's a problem, then that's gonna create an environment where people are not comfortable uh, highlighting problems because they don't want to see management. At Toyota, the managers are on the shop floor on a daily basis. They spend the vast majority of their time on the shop floor. And at Toyota, things go right most of the time. Our performance is very good. When things go wrong, people are then comfortable talking about why the, the process has gone wrong. And then respect for people kind of speaks for itself, respect. Uh, but we say, we respect a person by giving them a full day's work. So I'd be lying if I said every single process that we do at Toyota is standardized and timed. But the vast majority of processes are. Manufacturing processes, assembly processes, they're timed so we can give people a full day's work. Because the worst thing in the world we could do is give people wasted time. 
Yeah, the most valuable commodity that exists is time, and wasting people's time is very disrespectful. So we respect people by giving them a full day's work. And in a way, it kind of turns on what I said at the beginning about applying uh, a pressure, attention, in, in a way that is very clever. It's very clever if we fill people's day with work and they haven't got enough time in their day to do that work, there is a drive for them to do it, to do it in a different way, to get better at doing it. And teamwork. So we do lots of things individually. If we want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, you need to go together. And we do lots of team activities. We did some really good examples of uh, team activities in the learning sessions yesterday. Uh, there's so much value in doing, in doing those team activities. So the total weight culture written in 2001 is very simple to explain. There was a lot of low hanging fruit back then. It was very easy to share that across the world, and this is the way that Toyota want the culture to be applied. But the world has changed a lot. Yeah, the world has changed a lot in the last uh, number of years, and we need to review that. So in 2020, uh, in Japan, Toyota introduced a different kind of Toyota way. It still maintains all the same values of the original 2001 Toyota way, but the key thing with the, this version of the Toyota Way is all of the titles, all of the headings, act for others, work with integrity, continue the quest for improvement, all of those, they were the statements. And then that was sent out to each individual region uh, in the world, and they were required to identify what that meant to them. Yeah? So as we talk about situational Kaizen and situational improvement, in that way, what does the Toyota Way mean to you in your in your country. Every culture is different. So in the UK, what we've written under work with integrity will be different to what they've written for work for integrity in France. Okay, we've all seen the Toyota house before. We saw uh, some examples of, um, and there certainly are examples of the house on uh, the LEA um, material. Maybe what doesn't show up, if you do a Google search of the TPS house, you'll get that, but maybe what, what doesn't show up is the, is the bedrock, the stability of the Toyota house. Uh, and that's made up of five key systems for us. The first of which is 5S. So it's often the first system that organizations will try to embed because it's seen as quite straightforward, quite easy. And indeed, just to clarify that, we're audited by Japan uh, engine plants, assembly plants are audited. We've, we've got a system called Three Pillar, where they look in at three systems, standardized work, uh, ownership maintenance, and uh, tool point management or change management. And there are three levels, bronze, silver, gold. And Japan will come over and they'll audit us on those three systems. But before they carry out the audit on the system, the first thing they'll do is carry out the 5S audit. And they carry out the 5S audit because they believe that's very simple. It's a very simple system to apply. If you don't pass the 5S audit, they won't look at the system audit because they believe if you can't get the 5S audit right, we're not going to waste our time and yours looking at the, the system audit. So that's why 5S is key. And although there are five, five core systems and there are lots of areas to the house, it, it's all interconnected. Standardization and Kaizen will exist in 5S when you start introducing 5S. Effective line management, so how do we manage our, our lines from a visualization we said is, is very powerful. Uh, effective maintenance system, so everyone's got a maintenance department, an engineering department. How do we apply maintenance for us? I've mentioned it already, ownership maintenance. It's about taking what do maintenance do? Can we give back to the people on the process? Practical problem solving. Everyone's familiar with practical problem solving. How we go about tackling our problems in a systematic way. And then the final one, visualization that runs through everything. Again, for me, is one of the most powerful aspects of everything that Toyota does. I think when we did the problem solving exercise yesterday, myself and Kenny were struggling with the, the data and our answer was, our problem statement was we would visualize. We would visualize it, we need to see it. Yeah? There are 12 million sensory receptors in your body. 11 million of them are in your eyes. Yeah? So visualization is incredibly powerful for us. We want to be able to see what the condition is. So we believe those five core 
areas will deliver stability for us, be able to build on that with the standardization, and with standardization comes the ability to Kaizen. So people doing things the same way every time means that someone finds an improvement, everybody's gonna benefit. Yeah, and then up the side, the pillars, the just-in-time, so just-in-time was me and Kenny yesterday, I don't know if anyone noticed, we arrived. There were two chairs waiting for us there. They weren't, they just accidentally happened to be there. We came in, sat down two minutes before it started, perfect. Yeah. But just in time for us is a number of things. Continuous flow process, uh, not batch production. Again, I wouldn't say everything we do at Toyota when you come to the engine plant tomorrow is continuous flow. There are areas where we batch produce, but our ideal, the ideology is to achieve continuous flow. Tack time, yeah, run into that tack time. It's about setting that time for how long you've got uh, to make your product. Pull system, pulling through the process rather than pushing. Uh, and hey, Junker, giving us a, a level playing field on a day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month basis. So we're not making more at the beginning of the week than we do at the end. And on the other side, Judoka, so the natural, uh, literal translation of that is automaton. Uh, to build uh, quality into the process, often people say. Uh, and that consists of a number of things. So if we're gonna put continuous flow process in, the most important thing we need to apply in a continuous flow process is... Anyone? Can anyone read? Is it and on? Yeah. To stop the line. Yeah, to stop the line. If we put a continuous flow process in and we identify a problem, we have to be able to stop the line. So we have to put an and on in. Yeah, so we've got to put and on in, build the quality into the process. We need to separate the member and the machine. Yeah, so we want the machines to tell us when they've got a problem, but we also want the member to press the button. Three most important words that members learn at, at Toyota in the first week are stop, call, wait. Yeah. We want you, you've got the power to stop the process. We want you to tell us when you see something that's different. Stop the line and fix the problem and the pokey which again links back to the loom and to Kichi and what he built into the automatic loom. At the centre of the house are the flexible motivated members. So there's a lot of tools and systems there for people to apply, it can be quite complicated. So we need only flexible motivated members at Toyota. So therefore we hire from that pool of flexible motivated members that exists, yeah? No, the people that work at Toyota are exactly the same as the people that work in all of your organizations. It's what we do with the people when they come into Toyota that makes them flexible and motivated. Okay, when would we use Kaizen? So in terms of a, an illustration of when Kaizen should be in use, because often it's, a, it's, it's something that can fall into problem solving. When you're problem solving, when you're firefighting, we'll do something different, we'll fix the problem by doing that. When would we use Kaizen? We'd use Kaizen when? When we have a, an inefficient performance, so we're trying to achieve 85% efficiency, we're not achieving that. Why? Number of reasons, breakdown, maybe quality is not great, things are changing, something's happened. We need to understand why have we got away from the standard? That's where we would use practical problem solving. Get back to the standard using the problem solving method. Not by doing something different, not by, oh, I've had an idea, this will fix that and then that problem will go away. How did we get away from the standard and use PPS to get back to that? Now within the PPS, you might identify, maybe we need to do something different, but fundamentally, that would get us back to that standard condition. In terms of then Kaizen, that's about getting us to the next level. So we want to improve our performance, we want to get to 95%. We need to maintain the, st the standard, but then what do we need to do different on the process to level up to that higher level? And then ultimately, the goal, 100%, I think it was almost, again, coming back to your question, you're constantly challenging. You've not got very many defects, but you want to get to that perfection point of, of zero. We want to challenge, we want to achieve 100% all the time. Will we get there? I don't know. I can remember, what, probably 15 years ago, maybe 20 years ago. We used to wear baseball caps at D-side with challenge 80 on them, challenge 80% performance. And now all of the areas at D-side operate at upwards of 95%. So we've come a long way, but we're still not there, but we'll keep trying, we'll persevere. So Kaizen, 
And what we're going to talk about in the learning session a little bit more is how we apply it at every level. So I mentioned everybody in the organization is a, a team member. So we've got the shop floor operators, they're involved in Kaizen. The team leader at Toyota, typically responsible for six to 10 members, it may vary. And that's, I'm mindful when we engage with organizations, we often speak in to people whose team leaders are managing 30 people, 40 people. And how can they be expected to embed and create a culture when that's the case and they're managing that many people. So you put something in and you get a lot more out. So six to 10 members for a, a team leader, group leaders, maybe 30 members for a group leader, section managers, and then senior managers, you've got the, the area of responsibility. But everybody's involved in Kaizen, not different Kaizens at every level, maybe the team members Kaizen will involve every single one of those people in their supervisory chain. Question, who wants to fail? Anybody in here want to fail? I knew there'd be one. You want to fail because I want to learn. you want to learn. Yeah. Okay, so let's fail. Okay, can I do an exercise with you now? You've got 40 seconds and I'm conscious of some of you in this room who've seen this. So I won't ask you if you can remember. How many E's do you, can you see in this, uh, this paragraph that's gonna pop up? So I'm hopeful, hopeful that you can, uh, you can see it okay. Time, 40 seconds, isn't it? Is it long enough though? I don't know. We'll just, we're not gonna go around everybody, obviously, but I'll just, uh, I'll pick on a few tables. So I'll ask a, a couple of people off, off each table. So if we could go to this table, you, you sir. <laughs> 35, 35 and then someone else on the table. 40, okay. If I was to allow you to consent between 35 and 40. 35, he's wrong. Okay, I like it, yeah. yeah. You stick to your guns. Go, go to this table here then, so David? 32. 32? Wow, there was a misspell that they, they really put me off. Oh, uh, okay, okay, we'll come to that in a sec, yeah? 37. 37, so 32, 37. And if you were going to consent that? Okay, middle. Middle. Then middle for diddle, okay. Uh, what about this table? Someone on that table? 29. 29? 25. 25? Okay, you guys are sitting really close to the screen as well. <laughs> okay, if you were going to consent? 36. 36, you got 36? Okay, okay. There's actually 39. Okay, wow, what an amazing exercise that was. What on earth was the point of that? Yeah. Okay, so who wants to fail? And I, I'm glad that you said that, uh, Sharon, because it's obviously you want to fail because you want to learn. Of course you do. But the message that we're trying to get across there is nobody comes to work wanting to fail. No, no, none of the employees at Toyota come to work wanting to do a bad job. Everyone comes to work wanting to do a good job. Yeah, we believe that. If something goes wrong, it's about how has the system allowed that individual to fail? Not what that person's done wrong. What do we need to do to correct the system? Yeah, if I'd have said to you before we started, right, I'm gonna set you up to succeed, I'm gonna show you a paragraph, you can work as a team, there's gonna be five lines, you can, as a, as a pair, you maybe would pick different lines to look at, it would have been a lot easier for you to do it. If I also shared with you the brain thing that was, we touched on yesterday, your brain, yeah, as you're reading from that end to that end, 
you're skipping over some of the E's because you've seen these words so many times before. If you, I said to you, right, when you do this paragraph, start at the bottom at the back and work backwards. You would have had far more chance of getting 39 if I'd have shared that information with you. Like I said earlier, knowledge, it's the bomb. Yeah, you need to share it. Yeah, share that knowledge. I think you mentioned, this gentleman here mentioned, it's something through you in that. What was it that threw you? Yeah, the spelling mistake. There's a spelling mistake. Yeah. And the message of the spelling mistake is, is visual inspection reliable? Even though I've said 11 million sensory receptors in your eye, wow, how reliable is visual inspection? Do we have visual inspection processes? Do you have in your environments? Yeah, people checking things, looking for problems. It's easy to miss something. We've still got people that do 100% inspection in places, but we're trying to eliminate it because it isn't very reliable. The human eye isn't very reliable. Okay, so the message was the basic belief, everybody comes to work wanting to do a good job. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest lean content.